<laughs> Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie, and it's time to meet your makers. So a couple things happened during the past year that inspired us to put this little tasting together. Number one, during our advent calendar tournament, Julie took Makers 46 all the way to the final. It was her second favorite bottle during that tournament. It was a lovely surprise for me. Right. A couple other things that happened though. SE4 PR5 wound up being our favorite weeded bourbon of the year. It made our end of year 2020 list. I couldn't believe it. It was just so delicious. It's stellar. I almost tucked the bottle away into a corner so you couldn't have it. <laughs> she sent me straight out to buy a second bottle of it. That's how I much did. She I was it. worried it was going to get off the shelf and we weren't going to get it anymore. <laughs> the other thing that's happening in the Maker's Mark world is they've started releasing cask strength versions of some of their other products. So Cask Strength, Makers 46. We just poured this for the first time tonight. We didn't even have it open before now. Yeah. And this little guy here is Makers Mark Cask Strength. Non-46, doesn't get any of the stave profile treatment that SE4, PR5, or 46 get. That's sort of going to be something new for us to just an compare outlier. to the 46. Yeah, an outlier. Honestly, I have no idea how that's going to compare here. It's such a cute little bottle. It's an adorable little bottle. <laughs> we did have a sip of it the other day, and I'm curious how it's going to hold up. It was a little strong for this palette. So we're not blind tasting these. These are in order as you see them. One, two, three, four. We're just uh, gonna try and enjoy them. We'll probably rank them just because that's what we do. So we do. And it is a challenge after all. <laughs> we will talk about proof point and price and age on each of these as we go. And I think we should just get into it. What do you think? Yeah, I think that ding means it's a go. Round one. Cheers. Ooh, sorry, this smell smelled pretty good. Up first. Brings me, back, brings me back to the holidays. Are you back in competition mode? Uh, <laughs> are you feeling? Yeah, a little bit. Up first, Makers 46, 94 proof. All of these are aged between five and seven years. And this bottle here sells in Oregon for $35. Still smells great up the nose, still stellar. One of the easiest sipping bourbons mm -hmm. in the entire world. This was a bit of a surprise for me in the, what? It really is so oh. good. <laughs> I was like, what it did really I do is this so time? good. <laughs> I am not surprised at all that you took this as far as you did. It's so good. I mean, there's just nothing, I was gonna say wrong with it. That there's just, no, there's nothing offensive about it. it. Right, it was just really pleasant and very flavorful. A lot of melted caramel in there. I like that you call sugar. it, you always say melted caramel when you're talking about this bottle and you're absolutely right. It is so smooth, it's viscous, it coats the tongue. The oak mm -hmm. is very sweet. The vanilla, the Ooh, caramel. we got cherries in there now. Cherries, yeah. it's a pleasure to drink. It's only 94 proof. That vanilla. It's good on a cold day. It's great. Uh, just about, night, I think it's maybe. good on every day. Yeah. I can rave about this bottle on and on. I really do love it. The only reason it didn't go further for me is because it ran smack dab into 1920 in that challenge. There are very few bottles that could have knocked this out in the first round in that tournament. It's just super good. Yeah. And one last note that I'll say tasting wise, the vanilla isn't like vanilla extract or something like that. It's vanilla cake frosting. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, God, yeah. It's just so good. It's a little decadent. I like it. Eh, decadent's not the right word. I think it is. I don't I, know. I like decadent. It's rich. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> sure. The viscosity, the mouthfeel, the sweet flavors, I think that there's a decadence to it. I think you hit the nail on the head with that. So next up is the Maker's 46 Cas Cask Strength. It's hard oh, to say. That is a little bit tricky I've had to some say. trouble with it. <laughs> Neither one of us have tried this yet, so it'll be a new experience. 109.6 proof. This nose is yeah. light and... Wow. Fruit, I don't know if fruity is the right word. Yeah. Ooh, I like it. I, I, I didn't think that a lot was going to be better than the regular 46 nose, but how can I like be, the nose on this one. How can this be less caramel, more fruit, and actually not smell as aggressive hmm. as the 94 proofer? It sells for $60. I am so a nice excited. Nice nose. I'm I am so excited that. to try this. I thought this was going to be a lot hotter. It is such a sweet nose. Oh, it does drink a little bit hotter. You get a little, oh yeah, there it comes. Yeah, you get a little <laughs> bit of the, um, it's not a Kentucky hug. No. It kind of gets to some certain point and then kind of comes up into my nose area. I it's don't, a, I don't it's know a, why it does that, but it's, it's one of those. It's one of those creepers. It's a yeah. creeper. The longer it sits out, and again, this was a neck pour, I suspect that this is going to open up 
very, very nicely. Mm. There's a good oakiness about this. Some brown sugar in there. This isn't cherry forward, at least yet, yeah. uh, like the regular 46. I don't know if I, I would say the regular 46 is cherry forward because I always say it's just caramely. Well, it's but, got light cherry. This, yeah. This one is not so much that. I'm getting a lot of toasted oak on this one. The proof heat is there. The funny thing about weeded bourbons is mm. the lower the proof, the less I generally like them. Yeah. Whereas at higher proof, for whatever reason, that semi weird wheat sweetness that I'm not very fond of kind of dissipates. This one's got a little bit of that wheat weirdness, whereas even the Maker's 46, I don't really get that from. So this is an interesting sip for me right now. This seems to have like a deeper flavor profile mm -hmm. or- it's, um, it's more complex, yeah. absolutely. And I think one of the things that makes 46 itself such a standout yeah. is that it is a simple, cohesive flavor profile that goes down easy and is super smooth. This one, it makes you work for it a little bit. I'm not it saying it's any less rewarding. The finish isn't super long on this one, super strong. It definitely coated my tongue. I think it was just a shock of going from 94 to 109 proof so suddenly. Mm -hmm. And having such a sweet bourbon right off the jump. It does stick a little bit. Yeah. Right? There's a little bit of stickiness in there. I, I think the longer this one opens up, the better it's gonna be. That's true. I should give it the benefit of the doubt. It I was a neck pour, so. I'm, I'm gonna leave it and I wanna move on to the next one yeah. and come back to it because I think that one's gonna just get better and better. But I really did enjoy that. I absolutely enjoyed it. So next is the <laughs> Okay, so next is the SC SC4 PR5? Oh, that's like the first time. I, I cheated because you just told me what it was. <laughs> SCR PR5. SC4 PR5. Oh, dang it. You wanna do it again? <laughs> yeah. Uh SC4 PR5. Nailed that. Uh Okay. Perfectly done. So it. SE4 PR5 is Maker's Mark's 2020 limited edition wood finishing series. It is a combination of French oak and toasted American oak staves that they put in. Those oak staves are in there for varying amounts of time. So that's what all those numbers indicate. We hate the name just as much as everybody else does. It's kind of growing on me. Is it? Well, because you gotta work for it. All right, well, not, you were, I mean, you've been working for it for months and you still couldn't say it right. Uh, this is 110.8 proof. It is a $60 bottle, limited edition. They're going fast. So there's only a couple left that I've seen oh, in really? town here. Yeah, so. Shoot, we got a backup. Maybe we need a backup. You want a backup. backup to the backup? So this is our second highest proof, but only by a point one. Tenth of a point. Yeah. Oh, I love the smell of this one. Yeah, it's good. The oak on this, I think, is what sets it apart from the 46 cask strength. It's richer, it's darker on the nose. The caramel that's there is exciting on the nose, but what you get on the nose is also some brown sugar. So I think this drink's smoother than the cask strength that we just tried. I don't know, there's something about this one that is just deliciousness in a glass. There's that dry oak on the back end. It's not mm -hmm. like a normal barrel oak. I think that's gotta be something that's being contributed by those French oak staves. That changes the entire profile of this thing. It is just a little bit nutty, which I don't think I would have noticed if I wasn't trying them side by side. Yeah, I'm getting a little smokiness today. Mm -hmm. This is the bottle that I said previously reminded me of apple pie. Mm -hmm. There's a touch it's of apple, but it's the, it's the doughiness. Yeah. Of the pie crust, that's the thing that Not super it. sweet on this one. Mm -mm. There's some sweetness in there, which I agree with that doughiness. Not as easy to drink as our basic 46 there. No, but it's easier to drink than the 46 cask. Definitely. A lot more complex in flavors. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy this one. The sort of lasting note that I'm getting on the finish that I love so much is the crosshatch dough that sits on top of a pie. It's been sprinkled with those big chunks of sugar and then baked on there. Yeah, so it's a little bit of caramel goo and the dough and the sugar. I'm not I getting like it. a marshmallowy flavor, but that's probably because it's like that burned sugar. Yeah, that's delicious. I could sip on that one all night and I haven't had it in a while because it's one of those special editions that we don't take out too often. Well, and I've said this before that I think that it's more of my, I had like kind of a hard week. I deserve a bit of a treat. I just want to sit on the couch and just have a beverage for a few hours. I think you Maybe deserve not a treat a few every hours. night. Oh, thanks. Next up. On to the Maker's Mark cask strength. Yeah. I did not buy a full-size bottle of that, obviously, because I'm not a fan of the regular Maker's Mark profile anymore. It's another one of those that we used to always have makers on the shelf. My palate 
changed. And over time I realized I just don't care for it the way that I like other bourbons these days. Makers 46 was really the last holdover from the Makers line that I would even keep on the shelf for a long time. The new cask strength bottles here are helping to put it back on the shelf for us with these red wax tops. So this, not as sweet of a nose. I got a no, kind of a weird... I don't like this at all. I just made a face. It's probably, oh, yeah. the, That's I probably don't make... the first time you did that. I was going to say that this is not a... a uh, I was going to say a great tasting note, but maybe it is a great tasting note. Fire what? My first initial smell smelled a little bit like stinky feet. <laughs> But that's dissipated. There's nothing sweet, whereas these noses all have a little bit of a sweetness, apple pie-ishness, cherries that yeah. come out of the nose. I'm not getting too much. Smell the alcohol. There's some kind there's of fruit here. There's some oakiness in there. Not a lot of oak though. I think there's, what is that fruit? Well, we're just disagreeing on this one. Maybe. It's almost more vegetables than fruit. That might be the stinky feet note that you're getting. Well, maybe. I think we're agreeing on things. We just don't realize it. I'm not enjoying the nose on this one. Mm -hmm. And not because it's offensive, it's just there's not a ton there, in my opinion. I don't like this one. <laughs> Ooh, wow, that that is completely different than those other threes. I feel kind of guilty that it's in the it's in play because it tastes so different I than don't, the other ones. I get almost no sugary notes on this. I get almost no caramel, no oak. What I get is basically just astringent hot wheat whiskey. And I'm not a big wheat whiskey guy, so for me this doesn't do the trick. The, I think a... the reason that I like these so much is because that oak makes things happen in there flavor-wise. Yeah. This doesn't do much for me, if anything. It's got a quite a leathery taste to me. It did make my tongue tingle a little bit. And this is our hottest proof. This is 110.9 proof. This one we bought for 35 bucks, a 750 milliliter bottle will run you 50. So only 0.1 proof point higher than SE4 PR5. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is just... I'm not gonna say it out loud, but I'm really proud of her. <laughs> it should be, it took me a long time to get there. Uh, this is like... I mean, not even just in size yeah. here, but just so much I mean, the, th the thing about this bottle is we tried it. In my opinion. We tried this bottle the other day, and I thought, well, maybe it's just the neck pour. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Poor little guy. Poor little guy. The taste is just different. So yeah. this is another one of those where we're like, I feel a little guilty having it in the mix. This one has the sweetness on the finish. It reminds me of like a green smoothie. Man, if only drinking whiskey was as healthy as drinking green smoothies. The way I drink them. Whiskeys? Yeah. Or smoothies. What? Both. The way I drink a green smoothie is I put as many sweet fruits in it as I can. <laughs> With a little bit of spinach? With a, just a <laughs> hint of kale. And maybe some cast strength? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a touch of cast strength in my green smoothie. It makes the whole morning go faster. I will say that this bottle right here has inspired me to try one more bottle today. I'm going to pull down another bottle right now. Oh. That I think is going to be interesting to match Might up with these. Might help out the little guy? It's gonna or help, just all of I them. think it's gonna help me out. Oh, okay. More than anything else. I'm excited. We have two bottles of Larceny Barrel Proof. This is Heaven Hill's Weeded Bourbon. We have the C920, but the B520 is the one that I think has the most sweetness, a really beautiful complexity to it. I wanna put it up against these. I can't believe I've never done this before. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Not my favorite, but I've only, to be fair, only had it like twice. Well, the, the 92 proof Larceny is not my favorite either, but this one is 122.2 proof. It's got a good smell. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, it does. It's 122.2 proof. This is another one that they release three batches a year. This B520 blew me away when I tried it earlier this year. More than 10 proof points higher than any of this and sells for 50 bucks. Well, I think the nose is superior to this little guy and probably superior to this one. It's really nice. Yeah. Very pleasant nose. There's a touch of medicinal quality that I never really noticed on here before. Oh, But the caramel and vanilla are it's great. It's almost not like minty, piney, some sort of uh, needle. Green needle. <laughs> does that Good sound appetizing? Notes. Sure it does. I'm excited about this one. I'm, I'm gonna have a sip of this. Nope. As I was drinking that, I got a little bit of a molasses-y smell to it. I'm gonna say straight away, I would drink the Makers over the Larceny. The regular Makers? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, straight away. Wow, that's it's interesting. Not, They're the same price. Well, I don't know if I would drink either of them, to be perfectly honest. For my flavor profile, which is a lot sweeter, I like the caramels and the vanillas and the bright cherries and stuff. Mm -hmm. I like a good proof now, just not like crazy. So these probably would never be in my wheelhouse. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think that this one coats better than any of the rest of these. 
from a viscosity standpoint. The 122 proof, you definitely can tell that it's a hotter one. <laughs> to me, this is light years ahead of the makers. This is a definite profile change because now that I had the Larceny, I'm getting all kinds of cherries on this one and like vanilla and sugary stuff. You're right. I'm getting like grape soda on yeah. that now. Like artificial grape. I'm, I'm enjoying grape. it a lot more. I Thanks, am too. Larceny. <laughs> <laughs> artificial grape soda. That's what's all of a sudden coming huh. through. But I'm, I'm really glad that we tried this because I never would have gotten those notes otherwise. Yeah, that's not my jam. Sorry. But I know you do really enjoy it and you gave it like a really high honorable mention in our best of. I think that Larceny has the best legs of anything on the table right mm -hmm. now. Certainly the best viscosity. It is a $50 killer as far as I'm concerned. That's interesting. There was something like cookie-ish about it, like doughy cookie-ish about, I'm still talking about the Larceny, mm -hmm. sorry. Could be that I have five glasses in front of me right now. <laughs> So, I don't know. The cask strength Makers 46 to me is on pretty similar standing to the Larceny. They're both flavor-wise a little less cohesive than the SE4 PR5, I think. That's weird. I went, because you were talking about this guy, mm -hmm. so I went back to it. I'm doing it less than I did the first time around. Yeah, I think that this is on par with the Larceny. And again, the Larceny sells for $10 less a bottle than that mm. one. A lot of proof, Man, it, a lot it, of it, proof in my mouth right now. It, so the first time I went around, I was like, oh yeah, mixed mark, tastes good. Mm, cherries and caramels and oaks and all that kind of stuff. And then- That's exactly how I remember it going. <laughs> And then you brought this baby out, and I was like, oh, I didn't really like that. But then I went back through, and now I'm getting like these weird nutty notes. Yeah, there's a nuttiness that I never caught before. Could go either way for me. When you go back to the Larceny now, what do you think? Has that changed for you at all? It does have a really wonderful nose. I will it's say beautiful. that. For 122 proof, still drinks easy. I was like, oh, wouldn't it be something if I took that sip and was like, I'm sold. That, I don't really enjoy it all that much. Well, Larceny is not something. my bag. I'm gonna save that for you. Should we pull a few more off the shelf? No, no? we shouldn't. Okay, we probably. shouldn't. This video's going on long enough. If we ever start <laughs> live streaming, it's gonna be dangerous because we're just gonna be pulling things off the shelf. Let's try this one. Well, I'm always ready to like cut it and you're like, <laughs> let's keep going because she gets funnier the more glasses I put in front of her. It's got nothing to do with the glasses. <laughs> so what have we learned here today? I think we've learned that strong weeded bourbon can be very good when done well. And I will say that I'm a self-proclaimed beginner to intermediate whiskey drinker. I still love the low proofs. I just do because I'm not... You can be a low proof and not beginner. You're not a beginner. I would say that you're an extra intermediate. Ooh, an extra mediate. Extra mediate. Extra mediate sounds great to me. You guys can weigh in on that on the comments. Did that work? An extra mediate. So as an extra mediate, I still really enjoy the 46. Boom. Totally agree. Daily drinker-ish. Or not. It doesn't have to be. Still flavorful, even still after flavorful. all the proof that I just sipped on. I kind of graduated a little bit this year into that extra mediate. She's my extra medium bourbon drinker. Shout out Levi. Yeah, Levi wears extra medium t-shirts. <laughs> He looks great though. So what have we learned today? Yeah. Best nose. Uh -huh. Best palette. Okay. Best finish. Because For me, it goes best nose, best palette, best finish. Yeah. The Larceny finish, it lasts forever. But that's 122 proof, that's what you get. And I learned today that maybe I'm not a cast strength person. At least maybe not yet. I think that there are barrel proofers in the bourbon world that are much, much better than their younger siblings, mm -hmm. such as Larceny, the barrel proof crushes the 92 proof. Elijah Craig barrel proof smothers Elijah Craig small batch 94 proof. Makers 46, I think it stands up really well to the 46 cask strength, although this SR4 PR5 is pretty doggone good. Dumb question, barrel proof and cask strength the same thing? As far as I know. Oh. Makers Mark uses cask strength, Heaven Hill uses barrel proof, Wild Turkey uses full proof. To the best of my knowledge, they all mean the same thing. And I learned something today. Look at you. I know. That's what it's all about. It's people helping people here at the Bourbon Van. Well, Is there this anything so else to talk about? No, this? this was super fun. I'm excited to know that I still like this. Yep. I still love this. Yep. And this was great. When it opens up, I think that's gonna be a fantastic yeah. bottle. And that one I probably won't drink and I'll leave that for you or for friends who wanna come over and have some fun. So it wasn't so much of a challenge as a, I don't know, what's the right term? I think it was just an enjoyable, night uh, between two romantic friends. <laughs> Let's do that again. That was terrible. I didn't like that at all. I'm not doing it again because your reaction made me too happy. <laughs> Look, everybody, we had a great time. We hope you had a lot of fun. I don't want to, I don't want to keep that. That it's is too weird. Late. It is too late. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm trying to tell the people to leave comments. <laughs> you guys should comment. Subscribe. Don't comment. It's terrible. You guys should. 
let us know how wrong we were on this. Is there another weeded bourbon, especially cask strength, that you think that we missed out on here? Like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell so you never miss a notification from wherever we are. Oh, ring the bell. <laughs> I really hated that. To wherever you are. Thanks, guys. Cheers.